Hello and welcome to part 5 of the complete beginner's guide to Blender 3. In this episode we'll be starting the monster. It's a tiny bit more complicated than our old man character, so we're kind of gradually leveling up our skills. Do remember to check out the playlist on this channel or my website for more great content. Ok so here's where we got up to last time. And before we build the monster, we want to move our main character out of the way. Now we can see in our outliner over the right hand side here, I've got all my objects in one collection. So all these different cubes and the torch cylinder and the light as well. If I zoom out, you can see the light and the camera just here. Incidentally, if you click on an object, you come to your outliner and press the period key on your numpad, that will take you to that item in the outliner as well. So it's framing selected in the outliner. What would be really useful is if we had our objects that made up our character in one collection called Old Man or whatever your character is. That's very simple. We can select all our objects, press M to move to new collection. I'll call this Old Man and of course you can call it whatever your character is and then press OK. Now we can see in the outliner, if I bring down this window just a touch so you can see it easier, we've got all those objects in that one collection. The great thing about this is that I can hide them all with this eye just here so they're not visible in the viewport. They are still visible in the render, that's what that camera is there, so you've got the viewport visibility and render visibility. So with render turned off, they won't render anymore, but you can see them in the viewport. So just be aware of that if objects are appearing or not appearing in your renders and not in the viewport and vice versa. So I'll turn them both on for now and just show you one other thing. If I deselect all with Alt A, or you can just click anywhere in your scene, I can select my character Let's just zoom in a bit on them. I can right click on my collection and then I can select the objects within that and easily move them into position. So let's just do that. I'll go to front view, G to grab in the Z axis and move him above the floor like this. Now let's deselect all and hide my man so we can create a monster. I'll also minimize this old man collection and I can create a new collection up here. Double click and I can rename it monster. Now that that's selected, anything I add into my scene will be added into this collection. So if you haven't already, pause the video and catch up with me by putting your different cubes for your character into one collection and hiding it. So let's start making the monster. I'll press Shift S and move my cursor back to the world origin. That way I know I'm starting right in the middle and it makes things nice and easy when I'm trying to mirror and position my objects. Now the monster's a little bit more complicated than our character, still using overlapping blocks but I've edited those blocks in edit mode slightly more than the old man's shape. If you find it a bit complicated, you can keep the shapes nice and simple and it should have a similar effect. So I'll press Shift A to add, mesh and then cube. I'll come around to front view and this will be the trunk or the waist. So G then said, let's move that up a little bit and we'll scale it down so it's fairly small. So it's got a small waist and legs and a huge upper body. Now it is good to make sure that's right in the center on that z-axis. Remember you've got your toolbar up here, you can press N to clear that or bring it out again and there's my x-axis location and it's set to zero. So if I use this as a mirror object, I know it's right in the center. So let's create some legs, Shift D to duplicate, put those right on the outside. I'm going to scale but this time I'm going to press Shift Z to not scale in the z-axis. So it's creating a long sort of thin leg like this. G to grab and move that next to my body. And I think actually I'm going to select these and move them down just a touch. Some around here. Shift D to duplicate and we've got a calf. I'll just scale that all down to somewhere around here. Let's go to side view now with three on my numpad and I'll give them a slight bend to the leg as if they're squatting down. So R to rotate around that way and R to rotate around that way. And then let's have a foot coming out here. So I'll duplicate this one, Shift D and R to rotate. And I can always type in 90 degree on the X if I wanted it to be precise. I did happen upon 90 degrees anyway, so that was lucky. I can move that into position now. So we've got one leg sitting on the side there. I'll make my foot a little bit wider, so S then X, and that looks nice and simple. Now let's mirror these across to the other side. So as a quick challenge to you, see if you can remember how to do the mirror for the top leg. Pause the video and have a go at that. So I'll just move my outliner back up like this, so it's similar to yours. We come across to the modifier panel here, the spanner or wrench, add modifier, and the mirror modifier. Again, nothing happens because it's mirroring on itself around its object origin, just in the center there. So we choose a mirror object by using the pipette here and then clicking on the box. Now, if it's not mirrored across the other side, just make sure you are definitely along the X axis here because we've got the X axis tick just up there. Okay, so I can do the same for the other two objects, but see if you can remember how to copy the modifier from one object to another. Pause the video and have a go at that. So I select the ones I want to copy to, then shift select the one I want to copy from last, and that's the active object, so it's highlighted yellow. 
I can see my modifier there for that active object, cube 012. I can then press Control L, so that's link, Control L, and then copy modifiers. Then we've got our legs on the other side like this. Let's go back to front view then and create the big torso. So I'll use my trunk here, Shift D to duplicate, and then press Z or Z and move that upwards for the torso, probably around here. Then I can scale it up nice and big. Let's come around to side view and see what that's looking like. Far too wide, so we'll scale in the Y, somewhere around there. Now we want them bending over slightly so I can rotate this so he's sort of bending forward like this. That looks okay, so back to front view. I think we need to modify this shape as well so it comes from the waist and out towards the shoulders. So let's go into edit mode for this. So tab to go into edit mode or edit mode up here. We can select the bottom face and scale it in the X. So in face mode up here or three on your keyboard, select that bottom face, S then X and move that inwards. That's not bad, but I would like a cut around here so it comes out a bit sooner and then sort of squares off here. So see if you can remember how to create a loop cut around the middle. So you've got the control over here, loop cut, or you can press control R and create loop cuts like this. And when you move your mouse, it shows you the places that it will create a loop cut for you. So about here looks good. Left click once and I can position it, but there's fine. And left click again to set it. Now let's say I want to make adjustments to this side, so G then X and move it out, but I want it to update on the other side. This will be a good chance to use the mirror modifier on a single object around its own origin point. So not like the legs which use a different object. In order to do this, there's a couple of ways. We can go across to the modifier, add modifier and mirror, and we've got a mirror on the other side. And here we can see that if I update one side, it does update the other. But if I move it backwards slightly like this, over here, don't follow along with this, you can see that we've got this strange line here. Well, that's the other side mirroring backwards across the x-axis. So in order for the mirror to work, I'll undo those modifications there, we need to get rid of half our shape so that doesn't repeat on the other side. Now there is a tool for this called bisect, and if I click on bisect, that actually cuts it down the middle where your origin point is. So now if I press G to grab and move that backwards, we don't get this strange line down here where the original shape is over here. However, that can be really confusing for beginners trying to get to grips with the mirror modifier. I'll undo that. Now, just a quick note, I forget to turn the bisect off at this point. It doesn't make any difference because we'll be deleting half the shape anyway. So you can turn it off at this point or leave it on. It won't matter. What makes it a little bit simpler, although not a great deal, is to cut our shape in half. So if I press Control R and do a loop cut down the middle, so double left click to set that, and then let's go to front view, face mode with three, and select half our faces, like so. Now just a quick point, we're in solid mode, so it doesn't actually select the faces in the background. Let's go back to front view, let's go to wireframe mode and select those faces, and we can select all those faces on one side. That's why wireframe is very useful. However, it does look a little bit confusing, so let's go back to solid mode, now they're selected, and we can delete those faces. So press the delete key, and faces to delete those. Now it looks like it hasn't deleted, but this is the mirror modifier mirroring this side to the other. So if I turn the mirror modifier off with this disable in viewport button here, we can see half our shape. Let's turn it back on. You might notice that we've got a hole in the middle. That's because I edited this side and the loop cut wasn't quite in the center. Your shape might look slightly different to mine depending on how far out you pulled this edge here as to where the loop cut was positioned. But it's very easy to sort out I can select these two vertices here and here by going to vertex mode, selecting both of those, and then pressing G to grab in the X axis. However, I can overlap the other ones, which I don't really want to do because it's causing some overlap of faces here, and that can cause problems in modeling. I actually want them to stick together in the middle. Well, there's a button for that called clipping. So clipping just there, and if I press G to grab in the X axis to move them back, now they actually snap to the middle and that's where they stick together. So if I left click to set that and press G to grab, I can't actually grab it in the X axis, only the Z and the Y. So it clips them together. If you want to make sure all your verts around your object are clipped together, you can Alt left click to select the edge loop going around. Remember we selected face loops before, you can do the same with edge loops by Alt left clicking an edge that goes all the way around your shape. And then I can press G to grab in the X axis and if I move side to side, it's not moving because they're all stuck together perfectly. If I turn clipping off, 
G to grab in the x-axis, I can move that across, turn clipping back on, G to grab in the x-axis and stick them together again and left click. If you don't understand the mirror modifier, I go into it in more depth in my video on my quick tips playlist. So do check that out if you're confused at all. Now I can start modifying my shape a bit, maybe stick his chest out by selecting these two and pressing G to grab in the Y axis and move that out like that and give him a bit of curvature to his chest if you want to make those edits. Now one point here, I pressed G to grab in the Y axis, but I'd already rotated my shape. So if I press G then Y a little bit further, you can see it's sort of sticking the top out a bit and this face here is becoming non-planar, which means it's not flat like the other faces. But if you wanted to extend this out so it's flat with this edge down here, we could go to side view and manually G to grab and pull it downwards. But instead, I'm going to press undo a few times to go back to here. And I'm going to press G to grab Y in the Y axis, but Y again for the local Y axis, and then move it outwards. Let's go to front view to see the results. It's exactly in line with this. Now, if I go back to object mode, the rotation I made on the x-axis, so the axis going to and from us in side view, is being taken into account when I use the local axis for transformation. So when I press G then Y twice, I'll do that now, G then Y twice, it changes to its local axis. So it takes that rotation into account, which is really useful if I want to scale in the Y axis but the local y-axis, press it twice, and I've got the local y-axis. It's as if I hadn't rotated it at all, and I can still go up and down this way and side to side this way without any problems. So that's the local axes. Let's just go back into edit mode and select the top edge. I can either select these two vertices here or press two to go to edge mode and select the edge and press G then Z. Now again, let's come around to the side. That's not the local z-axis, so it's going off at an angle slightly. Let's undo that and press G ZZ or ZZ and then I've got the local Z or Z axis and then we've got this sort of neck muscles coming up the back there. So we've created this shape for our torso and that's pretty much as complicated as our character gets. So as a challenge to you I want you to edit the trunk so it comes down at a slight triangle which you can see in the final model on screen now. Pause the video and have a go at that. So in order to do that I go into object mode Select the trunk, go into edit mode with tab, front view, I can either select the bottom face now and scale it in, then add a loop cut, or I can control R, create a loop cut somewhere around here, and then select the bottom face. Incidentally, when you do a loop cut, it always puts it back into edge mode because it selects the edge loop that you've created. So back to face mode with three, select that bottom face, and we can scale it in the x-axis. That does mean we can bring our legs in as well, so back to object mode and I can start selecting those, G to grab in the x-axis and bring those in a bit. And I think what would be nice is to press R to rotate around the z-axis and just move them out slightly like this. It gives it more of an interesting squat. Now of course you can go in to these sort of objects, tab into edit mode, select that top face, scale it up so it's a bit bigger, so you've got sort of interesting looking quads that are a bit more blocky. You could even select this edge that's coming down here. So just in the middle there, we can't see it very easily. You might want to go to wireframe mode for that and maybe G to grab and pull that down. Pull this one up a bit. Let's go back to solid mode so we can see. Back to object mode, select all these and maybe move them in just a touch to somewhere around there. And we can do all sorts of editing. G then Z, move my character's shape down a little bit more. It gets a bit more complicated then, but I'll leave that up to you if you want to make those sort of edits. You can make it even more complicated, selecting the shape into edit mode, select that top face there, pull that down slightly, so G to grab to pull it down, back into object mode and select some sort of ball joint to go in here, so shift right click to move the 3D cursor, shift A to add, mesh and then something like an icosphere, scale it right down and it's got a sort of ball joint for the legs which I can mirror across the other side, so add modifier, mirror, use that mirror object in the middle there, and we've got kind of a hip joint there. That's just to sort of flesh it out a bit and give it a different style, but that's entirely up to you. They're not necessary to make those changes. One tiny edit I would like to make now is this edge at the front here. Select edges, select that edge, and G then Y to move it backwards. And lastly, just these two faces as well, G then Y. And you can see it kind of makes a bit more sense.
but here's a more simplified one with the original legs and it still looks fine. So you don't have to make those changes if you don't want to. So we're halfway through our monster. Hopefully you're still enjoying it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.